My name is George Visker, and uh, I have hydrocephalus, water on the brain. I've been through um, nine, uh, I have what's called a VP shunt in my head, drains spinal fluid out of my brain, so I've been through nine of those over the years. Hydrocephalus is not, un well, I shouldn't say unusual, it, it's, it's, it's rare to get it, uh, adult onset's very rare. Children are born with it. Um, and it's a, a blockage in your ventricles. Uh, you have ventricles in your brain, just like ventricles in your heart. Uh, your heart, of course, is for pumping blood, and your brain is for spinal fluid to flow through. And um, every time you get a concussion, you get spar uh, scar tissue that can build up on your brain, different people, different areas. And they think, uh, you know, on, on, in my case, I had a number of concussions over the years, and uh, they think that it, it built up, it's what's called the aqueduct of Sylvius. It's a small, the ventricles are just small little cavities in your brain. When the shunt goes out, which is, it's done eight times now since my first one, you know, I go into a coma within, you know, a day. I mean, I'm, within a few hours, I'm in pretty bad shape. Um, major headaches, it starts off with headaches as the fluid builds up. It basically, if you could just picture, I have little water balloons, two of them in the middle of my brain that don't drain properly, and so when the shunt goes out, they just start filling up with fluid, and it literally starts crushing from my brain, my brain from the inside out. Chronic traumatic encephalophily. I've shown classic symptoms of, of as guys are progressing, you know, uh, you know, poor judgment, um, uh, anger management issues, uh, insomnia. I've gone up to four nights straight without being able to sleep. I mean, f totally tired, wiped out. And due to the inflammation in your neurons and your brain, you can't shut things off. And on the other hand, since I started my treatments a couple years ago, um, uh, I've got a lot of things under control. Can you describe the, the pressure or the, the sensation that you feel inside? Uh, it's like when you're diving or whatever, you know, you're in a plane, you know, you have to keep popping your ears. Mm -hmm. So my ears pop a few times, so we get pressurized at 1.5, and then, and then I'm good to go. I do the hyperbarics. I do the, the omega-3s. I'm also taking, uh, uh, I take Dr. Barry Sears' omega-3s, and, and also he has a, uh, an antioxidant. It was a juice, now they have it in pills. And it's just it's just made out of pure like dried cranberry juices, concentrated juices, and things like that. Those all are full of antioxidants, which reduce inflammation in your all your tissues, but you know <coughs> also in your neurons in your brain. So I take um, several of those antioxidants a day. I take the omega three fish oils. I'm not I'm not a big one on drugs. They had me on four different drugs recently for dementia and memory within the last year, I mean, I couldn't even function. And I quit taking everything other than my, I'm on anti-seizure meds for my grandma's seizures. George is a walking miracle. He's lucky to be alive. Uh, I, I don't, I've never heard of, you know, somebody with the, the, the long-term problems and complications that he's had. Uh, he's here by his sheer will. Uh, and of course, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. It's not rocket science, so how hyperbaric oxygen works on a cellular level is that it revitalizes the mitochondria, and the mitochondria are the little fuel cells in all of our cells. They take oxygen and sugar and convert that into ATP, which is the gasoline that the cells run on. So what happens with hyperbaric oxygen therapy is it will bring those mitochondria back online because normally they run on very low oxygen tensions and if they get knocked offline by an accident or edema or a bleed in the brain, the body doesn't have a really good way of bringing them back online. Hyperbaric oxygen, under, which is oxygen under pressure, acts as a drug, turns those little mitochondria back on, revs them up, and it allows mitochondrial biogenesis, which is a fancy way of saying you can now make more mitochondria. So the neuron, the brain cell, can now act as a neuron. It can do its job. Uh, we give them tests before and in the middle and after, and they improve. Every one of them that we've treated has improved a certain amount. Uh, some are no longer diagnosable in some cases. Uh, 
in George's case, and you'll talk to George more about that, but he'll notice his symptoms begin to reduce so that uh, memory begins to come back, um, attitude improves, and the ability to function in daily life improves. We live, we live in the grass valley. I've had my office down in Sacramento for, for years. So I'll stay down here two or three nights a week and work until 10 or 11 or whatever, midnight, and crash it. One of my brothers or nephews on the couch, right? So every other night I'll come home. And I didn't know it, but for years, the nights I came home, you know, Christy would stay at school working late, sometimes with the kids, because they weren't sure who was coming home. They said either the gentle giant or Maximum George. I had no idea they called me Maximum George. Well, another symptom to traumatic brain injuries and CTE is with the inflammation of your brain. You're, you're, I was always just, you know, I never ever touched my family, but, you know, uh, as my wife said, I can be very intimidating, which, you know, I understand that now. And uh, they were just on pins and needles when I came home. Horrible way to live. George is really the poster boy for this. He's been through so much. He's able to articulate that as well. Uh, we're starting to see more attention paid to this, and that's uh, it's a good thing, not just from the professional elite athlete point of view, but we're treating young athletes, 15-year-olds uh, that have had a severe concussion, uh, straight-A students that have been unable to go to school, uh, whose neurologists say, don't worry about it. They're, uh, uh, for whatever reason, their dad finds our clinic and uh, we're able to, to heal those. And there's a lot of clinics like this around the country uh, that I'd like to see uh, utilized. Bring me up, Scotty. The higher up you get, the less a game it is and the more of a business it becomes. My absolute greatest memories of ever playing were at Stag High School. And, and people go, well, geez, you played in the Orange Bowl, you played on a Super Bowl championship team. And those were great, don't get me wrong, but um, in the NFL, it's a, just a dirty business. I never put any parameters or I never asked them to speak about anything specifically, but the, the best thing that George has done is talk about all the things that we talk about to the kids, about you know making the football team your fam part of your family. Uh, when we break at the end of the day, uh, it's family. And uh, you know that's the thing George talked about, how when he played here, it was like they were, it was their second family, and that's what we want our football team to, to believe in. And he talks about hard work, dedication, and how much fun he had playing football at Stag High School. When he talks, the kids, you can tell they're listening. They don't squirm, they don't move around. They're, they're totally focused on what he has to say. So what he, the message that he's giving them is sincere and is from his heart, so you know the kids are paying attention. I really wanted to get the alumni back involved with the program. And he, that's why I went to him first was, hey, how, how can we, how can we, I get him back? And he was a big uh, part of that. Came up with the suggestions. A lot of the things that we've done have been things that he suggested, the Hall of Fame, the golf tournament, all these things, things that he threw out there. How about this? How about that? And uh, it's, it's really worked. I mean, it's, it's brought more people uh, back and got them more involved with the school. Uh, another alum, uh, Mr. Gatz, got the, the uh, parade back and uh, going again. And, you know, George has been involved with the parade, so I mean, it's just, it's really helped uh, be a part of it. And to say he's the center of it, I definitely think he's been a big, huge part of it. And, I, you know, I could never thank him enough. Uh, we put him in the Hall of Fame, but, it's, you know, it's not as much thanks as he deserves for, for the amount of time and effort that he's put into to our football program. If we can get the NFL to step forward and acknowledge that what's been going on for decades isn't good for their employees, you're going to get that trickle-down effect. You're going to get the colleges that's going to, that will follow it. You'll get the high school level. We're, we're, I think we're on the verge of an of a epidemic of people like me. I mean, by the grace of God, I'm still functioning at a high level. But you read stories of these guys that go off to uh, drugs and da-da-da. Well, a lot of it is, is, is you know, they, they start on that path because they have damage. They were given last rites at the age of 23, had nine brain surgeries, suffered seizures slipped into comas, he had to fight the NFL and the 49ers for medical expenses, uh, recently lost your home. You feel, I think in some ways, like you're losing your family um, or have lost pieces of it. Well, what in your mind has been the most difficult part of your ordeal? That my, my, what it's done to my family, by far. Nothing else even close to that. I mean, just knowing the fact that, um, 
uh, when I come home, um, you know, my wife isn't comfortable around me, not knowing who's walking in the door. Uh, my children, you know, are, we're, I like to think that we're got, we've gotten beyond that in the last couple of years. Um, but uh, to have my children, you know, be afraid of me, you know, I, that kills me. I, 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 you could have my Super Bowl ring, Orange Bowl ring. I, I, honest to God, I wish I hadn't played. It's too late, so you know I'm not never one to look back. You know, it is what it is. So uh, that is the only thing that I really even care about anymore. Uh, on top of, I, w I don't want anyone else to ever go through this.